All right, first up. Okay, first up, we've got the uh, Game Duino Dazzler. Um, and this is pretty nifty. So this is a, a two-parter, basically. On the right is a Featherwing Breakout. And on the middle is this GD3X Dazzler, which has a, I don't want to get this part number correct, this is a Spartan 6 XC 6SLX9 Xilinx FPGA, and it's also got the, um, this FTDI, uh, you know, HDMI driver chip, it's got a bunch of RAM and HDMI output, and basically, uh, it has a scripting system that lets, lets you very quickly make stuff that connects to HDMI, and you can play videos and animations, um, and it's like pretty nifty. If you want to have HDMI coming out of your um, Feather M4, this is designed specifically for the Feather M4. Um, it's kind of an all-in-one like video system. So I have it hooked up yeah, here. Yeah, check this out. This is hooked up to an HDMI monitor. And this is like the first demo you run. So it's got, you, you can load in this bitmap and then you tell it you want it to rotate it. So this isn't a GIF. This is a composite image yeah. where it's like, it tells it to draw the background, and then it tells it to draw um, all these blinkers and have them animate. So it's like you can do quite advanced motion graphics and animations. Even though the Feather M4 can't do it, you, you have basically this graphics coprocessor. It's quite powerful. Yeah. There's also um, an Arduino Shield version, and I think there's a Pico version. Of course, you can wire it up to a Pico. You just have to do wiring and stuff. Um, but I just thought this was so cool. There's like video game demos and like animation demos and like I think you can play MP4s or movies. Just a glimpse of where we're going with like CircuitPython. Like there'll be HDMI out for you know, yeah, and all what, the stuff. What so I thought was neat starting now. is what's, you know, the, the, the person who, James Bowman, who, who did this and wrote the code, he realized if you have a coprocessor that's doing all the hard stuff, right, all the graphic stuff, it doesn't matter if the programming language that you're programming the coprocessor with is slow because all the high-speed stuff is handled on the FPGA anyways. Like you don't need to control an FPGA with C. Control the FPGA with CircuitPython, it's easier and faster. You've got a file system to load, you know, this is a, this bitmap is a, on the file system of the CircuitPython device. That part's really easy, and then you offload all the graphic stuff to yeah. uh, the coprocessor. So very cool. Um, so like you want to do games, you want to do HDMI output, Game Duino Dazzler. Next up uh, from uh, M5 Stack, uh, this is kind of neat. Somebody requested we got this, and we, you know we'll, we'll always carry stuff on request. We think it's cool. This is an M5 timer camera. It's an ESP32 with eight megabytes of PS RAM, a camera module, um, and it's a nice little clip. And what's neat about it is an ultra low power RTC with a timer. So it's really designed to do like ultra low power, go to sleep, and then wake up, take a photo, and then send it over Wi-Fi. So if you want to make like an outdoor, you know, or powered, you know, low power Wi-Fi wake up, take a photo, send it project. This is kind of all in one. It even has a mounting bracket. It's kind of handy. Next up. Next up, uh, NeoPixels. Our favorite NeoPixels, either 3.5 millimeter or 3.5 millimeter. We love these. We use them on all sorts of our products, such as the Neo Trinky. You see four of them here and you see them on many feathers. And you're probably like, man, I wish I had a hundred of them. And I wish I had a hundred of them on like a piece of cut tape. Well, we gotcha. Um, this is, uh, we've stocked these in packs of 10, but if case you ever want to like use these in a small pick and place, um, it's less expensive. We'll just send you a reel of, uh, 100, um, LEDs. Uh, you can use them. Uh, you can kind of hand solder them if you're careful. You can use them in reflow. Uh, just be careful about moisture. They're very moisture sensitive. Okay, next up. Next up, we've got USB-C. We've been carrying a bunch of connectors. These are very low cost USB-C connectors. Why are they so low cost? As you look on the bottom, you can see they are, have fewer pins than normal. They only have six pins. Why? Because they're power only. These do not have data lines. We're going to repeat that again. They do not have the data lines. We have other Did you put it all over the product page in a million places? I put it all over the place. These are specifically for mm. power only projects where you want to power something over USB-C. And again, only over USB-C, um, I think five volts. Put a five kilo ohm resistor from CC1, that's one of the pins to ground. Another 5K from the other CC2 pin to ground, and then there's two bus pins, two ground pins. You got five volts out. No data lines, but they're really cheap, and they're pretty easy to solder because the pads are really big. Uh, so there are projects that I think could use this. Um, other than that, they're great connectors. Just, uh, you know, I don't know if I mentioned it already, but um, no data lines, yeah. just power. All right, next up. Next up, this is a cool, long 
piezo sensor. Um, this is kind of interesting. So usually piezo sensors come in a square or round, you know, vibration sensor uh, shape. This is, uh, these are originally designed to be sleep sensors. Like they go in a pillow or underneath a, a mattress and when people move, uh, it can detect it. So piezo sensors, when they're moved, you see this, this fine hand model, um, as this uh, fine model, uh, you know, gently tweaks or pushes or twists the piezo, it generates a very small current between the two um, metal pins. You put a one mega ohm resistor between the pins, tie one to ground, tie the other to an analog input. You can read the analog input and detect touches, twists, etc. And then you can act on it. You know, in this case, it was designed for a sleep sensor data logger. That said, it's so unusual to find a piezo that comes in this shape. It's a very long, thin, flexible shape. This could be used for all sorts of uh, sensor applications like wearables, I thought, or like sports, or, um, you know, anytime you have a touch sensor and it has to go around something or through a thin slot, it's just a very unusual shape. It makes them a little bit more expensive, but, you know, I've never seen anything like before. So I think these are quite cool. Uh, you can cut it down, of course, but once you've cut it, you cannot reattach it because the film is, is, you can't solder the film. So you've got like the one end and then it kind of goes on for, you know, 600 millimeters. Cut it, just be aware, once you cut it, you can't uncut it. All right, next up. Okay, next up, we've got uh, the NeoPixel with, uh, this is a one meter long 60 LED NeoPixel strip, and it's got this very beautiful diffused silicone covering which will also show on the overhead in a moment as soon as I get my, my demo going. Um, so these are basically like your everyday normal uh, NeoPixels, uh, power them with five volts, give them data on um, you know one of the pins using any NeoPixel library. But what's cool about them is um, they've got this very durable and weatherproof uh, soft silicone covering. So let me turn it off so I can show you. So it looks you can barely see the LED strip through it. I mean, it's almost more visible on the camera. And uh, on the back, it's got a nice, it's, it's a firm, stiff, like you can't really bend it this way, but it, it, you know, it does bend back and forth this way. And um, what's nice about it is, uh, as I mentioned, it's, it's, it's a very nice diffuse effect, more so than, it's not as much as our neon, which is, um, you know, really a thick plastic, and very hard to bend. And it's definitely not as clear as a, um, the uh, clear translucent normal NeoPixel. It's, it's diff diffused and it makes it like kind of pastel-y. Um, it kind of has a beautiful look. So we have really good photos. Check out the animations because they're, they're shot quite nicely. But I think if you want something that's durable and weatherproof and, and has a little bit of diffusion, um, but still is flexible, um, this is a nice intermediary between the totally clear and um, of course, this um, the the totally uh, diffuse neon yeah. neopixels. Yeah. So you hold it up. Yeah, I wanted to show it on the other camera too. So yeah, it's it's hard to explain, but it's like I like the look of it. Yeah, it's really you know? nice. It's a very elegant look. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I've, it's, I, I've known and seen projects that like this is this is the main thing they just wanted to be diffused, but they're using neopixels yeah, that aren't diffused. Yeah, it, it just has a nice clean look to it. So I think. Uh, you know, for wearable projects or architectural projects where you, you want it to be thinner than the neon, but um, yeah. it's cool. not, as, not as harsh as the clear NeoPixels. So, I, okay. know, I like it. All nice right. Stuff. Next up, the star of the show tonight, besides you, Lady, our team, our community, all the customers, the folks in the chat is... Itsy Bitsy RP2040. Um, that's right. We're going to put some into the shop a little bit later tonight after the show because uh, we ran out, but uh, I stashed some, so we'll put some more in. This is the RP2040-based Itsy Bitsy. So people like the Itsy Bitsy inspired um, by Teensy boards, but I wanted to have them with different chips. Um, so it's kind of the, the same sort of size. It's, uh, I think, 0.7 inch by 1.2 inches. Uh, Bite-sized, but has a lots of GPIO pins. Um, the GPIO pins go all the way around. I want to show and compare. So this is the M0. Get right in there. Oh, focus. And lock. Okay. So you got the M0 Express, the M4. Lock. Uh, the Blue Fruit. And now a uh, new friend is made, RP2040. 
So the, four itty bitty. It's four. Well, there's four actually two more. The thirty-two you four ones, which I didn't even bring down, because uh, these are nice and popular. But what I try to do is I try to make them sort of similar. I try to have like the Neo Pixels over here, and um, you know these have the buttons on the end. This of course has the antenna here, so the buttons have to, to move up. Um, so the itsy bitsy, if you want to have a lipo battery, you have a lipo backpack that you can use with it. Um, this is a single sided board. It has an eight megabyte QSPY flash. It has the reset button, it has the boot button. Um, I did the cute Pyrony hack where the boot button is also a user button after booting. So when you're running code, you can use this as a single button input. Uh, it's got a little NeoPixel here. I wonder if I still have the NeoPixel going program. Yeah, I do. It's got uh, one red LED for blinking. It's got the crystal, power supply, lots of little capacitors. I had to use a 402 component to make everything fit, but it did all fit in the end. Um, and then on the bottom, we have the GPIO pinout. So this is if you're using it with Pico SDK or with you know, MicroPython or, or something where you need to do the raw pin numbers, these are labeled on the bottom. And then um, there's one pin, D5, that's special purpose. Uh, and that pin is level shifted up to about five volts. So if you want to drive NeoPixels and you want a five volt output, there's some there's just some times where people are like, I need to 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 control something that's a five volt input. It really wants five volts, particularly NeoPixels. That pin is level shifted out to zero to five volts. So you've got one pin over here. It's five. It's got the exclamation point to remind you that it's the output pin. Um, but otherwise, it's what's nice about the RP2040 is, you know, it's it's a dual core Cortex M0. It's running at 130 megahertz. It's got Circuit Python and now Arduino um, supports coming out. MicroPython support. You can do Pico SDK, and he's got a lot of pins. Um, and I made sure that you know you've got not only a lot of pins, but you got all the analog pins. Um, there are eight pins in a row if you want to do like camera projects where you use the PIO to, to drive eight GPIO at once. Um, they're not all in a row because I wanted to match like the SDA and, and SPI pin and UART and analog pins match the other itsy bitsies. Um, but they are available. You can get to all those pins if you want. They're just, if you look on the bottom, I think it's uh, 26, 27, 28, 29. And then 24, 25, 18, 19, 20, you know, whatever. Basically, you got lots of pins that are in a row. So if you want to use PIOs to, to drive many pins in parallel, you got it. And, you know, what's nice is that you can swap the, between the two. You got a project with an M0 and M4. You want Bluetooth, swap between it. You want RP2040, swap between that as well. So, um, you know, this is one of the original RP2040 boards that we said we would design. And so we've, we fulfilled it. We got the Cutie Pie. Itsy Bitsy and the Feather. So this is a great tiny board with lots of GPIO pins. And if you want, you can add a LiPo charger onto it by soldering on one of our LiPo backpacks. And that's new products.